Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online build video with me, Sherman. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Battle Priest. This is a solo mag Templar build made for solo play. It can be played in two-man group play and three-man and four-man if you wanted to use it as that. Um, you'd have to make some modifications, but it would work in any uh, conjunction there. I'll put it that way. <laughs> So, let's go ahead and get right into the build, starting with the stats. As you can see, we have 34k Magicka with a 25k health, 10k uh, Stamina. We are a high elf Templar with this. We do have a really good Magic Recovery, which is really important for this. Uh, 1378 with a 2600 spell damage and a 29% spell crit. Do not worry about that spell crit. It does go up, guys, to a 40% almost spell crit. You can get a little bit more out of it, um, like spell critical wise, if you use certain other sets. But this combination I have set up works w for one reason. It works the best is because of how it works. Um, with all the AOEs, this thing or uh, damage over time, this thing has that 30 40 percent actually grows. So you actually get a little bit more crit out of it than you think. So. Looking at the resistances, we are running a 19k spell with a 16k physical. We can get more out of that as well um, with our resistance buff. As you can see, we can go to a 24k spell with a 21k physical. Not ideal, but still really good. And then going down here, you can see we are running the Apprentice Mundus Stone, which is, give, gives us um, increased spell damage. And then we are using dual stat food of Witch Mother's Potent Brew. This gives us max health, max magicka, and magicka recovery. We, when you make a build like this, you want to shoot for about a 25k or higher health and a 34 or 30k or higher magicka, uh, because of the way magicka scales to to stamina, in a sense, magic like spell damage and magic damage, all that kind of stuff. Like how that scales versus weapon and spell. Um, things you really want that higher magicka with this build all right so moving on to the gear the gear is a little different than the last build i released which was a templar solo templar build uh stamina version this one is actually using alombris and that's because you're mostly at range with this you're kiting a lot that kind of stuff so having alombris is really good another set that you could use is grothdar you could pretty much use any set you want, monster set you want, that does deals damage and gives you extra magicka. It's really up to you, but I just prefer Alombris because it just works out really well. Um, but as you can see, the one-piece magicka, two-piece, it deals flame and sh or shock damage, and you have a 10% chance uh, for that to happen, and then it does 15, 20 damage to all enemies within a four meter radius for one second for five seconds and it can happen every eight seconds this thing will be firing off quite a bit the next set we're using is julianus shouldn't have you guys should have known this this one does spell crit max magica spell crit and then spell damage there is another set you can use which gives you minor force <clears throat> which is a magica heavy armor set uh but it doesn't give you the crit that you need this one gives you the crit you need, and it gives you that extra spell damage, which is nice. Um, the other nice thing about it is you can get this crafted, so you can actually make it in the combination that's going to best suit you for this type of playstyle. Uh, so you want a medium helm, and the rest five-piece heavy, and then the one light is going to be on the belt. And the reason the one light on the belt is because light armor gives you the least amount of resistances, so does your belt. So light there works the best. <clears throat> Excuse me. So on the, the five piece up here, we are running five heavy, like I said, one medium, one light. The three big pieces are infused. The smaller pieces, like the belt and the gloves, are Nern honed with the shoulders and leggings being reinforced. This is more for survivability in solo play. Next up, we are using three piece or five piece plague doctors, and on the jewelry. Um, we are using all infused now the reason I chose plague doctors is it just gives you enough health to make you Not need anything else. So you don't really need any like Anything to give you more 
because Plague Doctors just gives you exactly what you need. And with that 4% healing taken, it really plays well with this build in survivability. Um, also, the max health helps. So the reason we went all infused on the jewelry is so we can have two spell damage and one magic recovery. As you can see, the two spell damage gives us a nice chunk of spell damage there, and it's really, really good for this build. Um, when you do swap bars, the spell damage does go down by a little bit, but not by much. So, again, really good trade-off here. Now, looking at this here, um, you want the one magic recovery because you need that extra magic recovery. You can go all spell damage uh, with this build, but honestly, that magic recovery is going to play a lot better into this build than you think. So... It's good to go two spell and one recovery. Now moving on to the weapons, we are using two staves. One fire staff on the front bar with a fire enchant. Nernhone. You want Nernhone on the front bar. You want that greater amount of damage. As you can see, 1535 spell damage um, from this is, is just what it does. But it also does 1535 weapon. You don't need to worry about the weapon damage. It's mainly you want that spell damage up there. And it works out. On to the back bar, we are using a lightning staff on the back bar with infused and weapon damage enchant. The reason we're using the weapon damage enchant is for the buff to our spell damage. That that 452 extra spell damage plays really well in this build. Once you have that going and your potion going, I'll show you guys real quick. Um, on the front bar alone, you go to 3,716, almost 4k spell damage which makes this build super, super powerful on the front bar, um, damage-wise. <clears throat> so really, really good combination there. Now we're going to jump over to the skills. Starting with class stuff, make sure you get all your class passives. It's, it's just really important because there's things like Burning Light that you're going to be getting the proc of. You're going to get Piercing Spear, which is crit damage. Um, Spear Wall, which allows you to block more melee attacks if you need to block a melee attack. Dawn's Wraith, you're going to get Illuminate, which is going to increase your spell damage by another 10, uh, 5%. So you actually get a lot more spell damage out of this build. In the end, I think you do get close to 4k. Let's, let's do this again. Pop our Potion, Lightning Attack, throw this. Uh, almost 4k. 3,871 spell damage. Almost 4k spell damage. So, for solo, that's fantastic. That is amazing. So, yeah. <clears throat> but, again, going over class passes. Make sure you fill them out. Weapons, uh, destruction staff, you want all the passives. You can also learn the resto staff passives, because you can use resto staff with this. If you want to make this kind of like a hybrid tank healer type tank healer dps type person you can do that and resto staff and lightning staff on this combo is amazing on the templar moving on light armor you want the top three passives you really want this recovery and you want this right here uh but the spell warding also helps the extra spell resist moving on the you don't really need these two but they still like this one helps out um with the reduced cost of stamina if you do decide you want to use a stamina buff or something but athletics, you definitely want this. You want that 4% reduced dodge roll and that extra uh, medium armor uh, sprinting thing. So heavy armor, you want all the passives, mainly for like revitalize the, the healing received and the health. And then moving on to world stuff, soul magic. I go with these two, but you can also go with vampire or werewolf on this, but vampire is definitely better than werewolf. Moving on to the Fighter's Guild, you want the Banish the Wicked only. And then on the Mage's Guild, you can go with Inner Light if you want it. You don't really need it. But you will be getting uh, Shooting Stars. So getting this one here on the front bar is going to be good for you because it's going to give you 2% Max Magicka for having that Shooting Star there. Sigic Order, you're going to want all the passives because of things like the Concentrated Barrier, the deliberation when you do cast the one ability you do have which is race against time which i know is an instant cast it's still that during the time of casting you still get that 30 percent damage reduction which plays well with this but you also get spell orb which allows you to summon a magic orb when you're doing casting this another thing you can do is you can use this um and elemental weapons instead of the the ability here, we'll get to that in a second, but you can use this if you want to. 
Undaunted, you want the Undaunted passives. And if you choose, you want to tank with this a little bit in, like, normal group play, like, normal dungeons, or even some veteran dungeons. And I say some because only some will, it will work in. You can use Inner Fire for your taunt. Um, probably go with the Stamina version on that. And then Alliance, you don't really need anything unless you want to use it for more group. You can use Barrier, and you can use Warhorn with this build, by the way. High Elf. All the passives on to the crafting alchemy medicinal use is really good and provisioning gourmand and connoisseur so going over the skills lightning lightning is really good with this or lightning and um, yeah lightning and, and resto staff is really good combination for this you can do that I prefer this setup though that I have the mat the, the the fire whatever but you can go the lightning one like I said uh, this one is a fire lightning setup so we are using force pulse or crushing pull uh, shock on the front bar this is going to do decent amount of damage on the front bar but it's also going to give you the ability to set enemies off balance and interrupt them if they're casting an ability so even if it's a stamina character magic character it doesn't matter if they're casting an ability you can set them you can uh, interrupt them and set them off balance the next ability we have is reflective light this is an amazing ability guys this can hit up to three targets it does damage over time does damage up front and damage over time not a large amount of damage over time but it's enough to kind of give you that extra chance of proccing your alumbris and then moving on, and it also gives you 5% magic magicka. Um, moving on, we have Blazing Shield. This is just mitigate damage and also the fact that it, it absorbs damage and blasts out 52% of the absorbed damage, which can also proc your uh, Burning Light here. So you can see 4,714 magic damage is what it can do. This can do 52%. Per and when it when you look at this, it can absorb up to 8,700. So this thing can actually do 52% of that damage outwards that it absorbs. So it can actually deal 10k damage if it procs the other thing. If it procs this, it can do up to 10k extra damage. Um, moving on, we also have Honor the Dead. This is going to be our self-heal. You can use this on other people if you need to. You can also change this out for Breath of Life. It's really up to you. I like using Honor the Dead because if I heal myself below 75% health, I get 60% of the cost back to me, and I also get, um, yeah, I get that 60% back. But it also gives me my heal, so it's really good. Next ability we have on our bar is Race Against T Time. This is an instant cast. It grants us minor force, increasing our critical damage by 10%, which also stacks with this 10% critical damage. So these two together, that's a 20% increase in critical damage, which is really good on the Templar, um, especially Magicka or Stamina. So either way, you get a lot of critical damage out of them. And then on top of that, we also have Shooting Star, which is just a crazy amount of damage over time, plus impact damage, plus it gives you ultimate just really good combination moving on to the back bar we have blazing spear and this is like i said where you can swap out that resto staff and you can move some of these abilities to the front bar if you wanted to but blazing spear works best or uh, uh rest lightning staff actually works best on the back bar so blazing spear as you can see does damage up front <clears throat> so you get a decent amount of magic damage um and damage over time it also can be synergized if you are in a group so nice carryover but it's the fact that it does that good damage over time and the damage up front and when it's fully but when you're fully buffed up with your potions and you have all your other stuff like you can see this thing goes up even more in damage i i think it goes up to about almost 6k damage up front and then almost like 1500 damage over time with all the buffs Next up, we have Blockade of Storms. A lot of damage over time. Also has a chance to set enemies off balance. Then we have Ritual of Retribution. Good heals over time. Good damage over time. And then also it purifies you of negative effects. So really good to have. And then next we have Elemental Drain. This applies Magicka Steel on the enemy. It also gives us 24 seconds of Major Breach, which is our spell penetration. Um, 5,280. Really good for us in solo play and then next ability we have is restoring focus this gives us our major resolve major ward and it gives us minor vitality increasing our healing received and 
8% damage reduction with that minor uh, protection. Last but not least is Solar Disturbance. This is just crazy. It does good damage. It also applies major maim to the targets for 10 seconds. So 10 seconds, they're going to get major maim which reduces their damage by 30%, and then it's going to do 4k damage over time. And then, of course, that is also boosted when we increase our spell damage. As you can see, it just went up just a little bit. Uh, so really nice trade-off there. Right, so we get a, a good mix of damage, as you can see, healing and self-sustainability, or self-survivability, and then self-sustain, just everything. This thing has everything you could want uh, in a solo build. And that is the skills. So now we're going to move on to the CP. Starting with the red tree, we have 56 in the ironclad. This reduces damage taken by 20%. Moving on over here, we have 23 in the thick skin, reducing damage taken from damage over time effects. This is poisons, bleeds, disease, you name it. It's going to reduce that incoming damage by 10%, which both of these, thick skin and ironclad, do stack with hardy and elemental defender. On to Hardy, we have 56. This reduces damage taken from physical poison disease damage by 12%. And you know that restoring focus thing we put down, that ritual focus? <clears throat> that gives us minor protection, which stacks with this. So we get another 8% 8, 8 on top of it. Next ability is Elemental Defender, which reduces damage taken from Flame, Frost, Shock, and Magic damage by 12%, which, of course, that 8% stacks with. So we actually get 20% here, along with this 10%, which is 30. Or over here, we get 40 so we get really good mitigation. Now moving on to the next one, we have 40 into Bastion, increasing effectiveness of damage shields by 16%. That's perfect for this build. And then 19 into Quick Recovery, increasing our healing received by 5%, which also plays well with this build. Because we have that 4% from wearing Plague Doctors, that added to this is 9%, plus the 8 or 16% for the, res the focus we have, the healing received, and... The 8% we get for healing received on wearing five pieces of heavy armor, we have like a 20 something percent or 31% or thir almost 30% healing received. It's crazy. Moving on, because we get, let's see, 16 plus 9, 25% healing received. So it's it's just crazy. And if you're, a, you're a, a, an Argonian with this build, you get. 30% healing received. So moving on to the green tree, we have 26 in the Warlord. This reduces break free by 11%. That saves us stamina or saves us in cost of stamina. Then we have uh, Sprinter, which reduces our sprint cost by 15%. That saves us stamina. And then, of course, over here, we have 43 in the Arcanist, increasing our magic recovery by 10%. 76 in the Tenacity, increasing our magic return by 14%. Um, from our heavy attacks, which is really good on this because that plays into the fact that we're wearing heavy armor. And then moving on over here, we have 56 in the Shadow Ward, reducing our block costs by 20%, and then 23 in the Tumbling, reducing our dodge roll cost by 10%. Now, we do get another 4% from wearing one piece of medium armor, so we actually have a 14% reduced cost in Tumbling, which saves us some better amount of resources when we need to tumble. And then one into Pafal. That's just thrown there because we have nothing else we can do with it. Uh, moving on to the blue tree, we have 43 into Blessed, increasing healing done by 10%. 56 into Elfborn, increasing critical damage and critical healing done by 20%. 43 in Elemental Expert, increasing Flame Frost, Shock, and Magic damage by 10%. Now remember, we're also a High Elf, so we get an extra 4% Flame Frost and Shock damage. So we actually have 14% there. Um, just not to the Magic side. And then 12 into Spell Erosion, increasing Spell Penetration by 1191. That's just basically there to give us extra Spell Penetration, because we only have 5,000 normally. Moving on over here, we have 40 into Master at Arms, increasing our damage done with direct damage attacks by 16%. And then over here, we have 56 in the Thaumaturge, increasing our damage done with direct uh, damage over time effects by 20%. The, the, we have a lot of damage over time, so we're going to get a lot of damage out of this. Uh, in the long run. So I'm just going to show you guys a quick thing with the build so you guys can see for yourself how it works. So we're going to go ahead and debuff this guy. And as you can see, we've already broken 20k.
I'm not even doing a heavy attack there. But watch how much I get back on my heavy attack. My heavy attack just gave me 5,178. When I do a heavy attack on the front bar, I get 3,739. That lightning staff is crazy on returns. Now, the other thing is, is that, like I said, you can use a resto staff with this. And the place I would suggest using it is on the front bar. Because you can switch out the Sigic ability. Race against time. Or not race against time. Uh, but you can switch out this for the elemental weapon. And use a resto staff up here. And get that greater benefit. And then that way when you're on the resto staff bar. You have the same kind of heavy attack that you do. So you get that that heavy attack. And as you can see a lumber is just procced off of that. And you can see we're, you know, 12k DPS with this setup on that thing. And you got to remember that thing has 18,200 penetration. If I wanted to get greater penetration instead, I could go over here and trade out my um, Mundus Stone for the Lover. And I could get greater physical and spell penetration if I wanted it. But you don't really want to have too much penetration with this build because of the fact that you are soloing content. So you want to make sure that you have a good amount. And with 6,000 penetration, actually almost 7,000 penetration, because you have 5,280 with 1,100 uh, and something, you actually go to um, 6,007 or 6,000 like 400, almost 500. So you have 6,500 penetration with this build as is. And with 6,500, when you're fighting overland mobs, overland mobs only have 9,100 uh, penetration or resistance, so you don't need that much more uh, penetration to just annihilate these guys. I'm just going to go ahead and take this character out here to show you how well they can work in the overland because, like I said, in delves, public dungeons, dolmens, abyssal geysers, world bosses, they all have 9,100 resistance. So... They, they, you can just obliterate this stuff with the amount of damage this thing can do. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys real quick. <clears throat> Over here. We're going to go just find just some enemies. It doesn't matter which kind. So I'm going to go ahead and put down my circle of protection. I'm going to hit one of these guys with that I mean, they, these, they just melt because of all the damage you have outgoing. So. And that's that's without the, the major breach on there. Now, when it comes to, like, a boss encounter. I'll just show you guys real quick so you guys can see, well, again, for yourselves, how much... Uh, damage you can really do to enemies. We're not going to do the Abyssal Geyser. I'm not going to spend my time on that because, uh, yeah, it's just going to, it would take a little bit. But I mean, I guess I could. I could show you at the Abyssal Geyser how well this thing can solo it because it's just incredible the amount of outgoing damage this build has and survivability. So the thing with this is you want to focus on the big targets.
The other nice thing is, is that with the lightning staff on the back bar, you can just pretty much uh, heavy attack and, and just melt things. Because it will it'll constantly proc your um, your damage. But you spell damage buff, that's it. And like I said, no resource issues with this build, uh, normally. Sunset will soon be back <coughs> beneath the waves. And there you go, you guys can, I mean, just saw it for yourselves, like, this thing has no, no real issues with sustain, with uh, anything, really, um, in that fact. Now, I'm going to take it over here to a world boss, and we're going to go ahead and face off against it. And I'm not going to face the whole entire world boss down, because that would just, it'd just take too long, but I'll just show you guys how well the build can work against world bosses. And this way you guys can also see its damage output versus its survivability and everything else. So. And we die. I just let myself die, though. So, yeah, really good survivability, really good damage to an extent. I mean, 29k on this, which, you know, because of all that trash and everything, you could see uh, it would have been more or less around 20k, not 29k uh, DPS. So this thing can pull a decent amount of damage per second. Great survivability and great solo ability because of its heals and... and yeah, it's just overall just crazy. Especially if you have this out first and then you put this down, then you do your this and you do your heal. As you can see, like 14k heals on that. Um, with a resto staff on the front bar, if you heavy attack, you also get uh, major mending. So you can also get greater heals from your Breath of Life.
and the fact that I mean it's just a matter of how you keep your 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 spells and skills and all that stuff uh, going. And a Nernhold Resto Staff is crazy powerful, guys. Like the amount of damage you can get off of it on a heavy attack is just insane. I think it's they I I got mine up to like six k a tick, so that's a lot of damage. <laughs> With all the other AoEs going on. And the fact that I get a, like 5k resources back from my heavy attack. But that is the Battle Priest, guys. I hope you guys like it. I love this build. I think it's probably one of the funnest builds I've played. When it comes to solo magicka because it's just so versatile it has everything it has a heals it has damage it has tankiness it has <laughs> just everything and it's a super 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 cool build super fun to play i hope you guys like it if you guys do you guys can hit that like button if you guys want to see more builds by me you can hit that subscribe button other than that i want to thank you all for watching until next time have a wonderful day and this guy might see you in game bye